Oxygen Therapy and Humidification In the administration of oxygen as a medical intervention, which can be for a variety of purposes in both chronic and acute patient care, oxygen is essential for cell metabolism, and in turn, tissue oxygenation is essential for all normal physiological function. High levels of oxygen in blood and tissue can be helpful or damaging, depending on circumstances and oxygen therapy should be used to benefit the patient. Indications. Evidence of hypoxemia. PaO2 of less than 60 mm mercury. SpO2 of less than 90%. Severe trauma. Known or suspected MI or acute coronary syndrome. Surgery or post-anesthesia. Delivery devices. Low flow devices. These are variable mix of room air and delivered oxygen with each breath. Nasal cannula. Consist of two prongs that sit at the nostrils 1 to 6 liters per minute. Approximately 24 to 44 percent. Inspired oxygen concentration will vary. The higher the patient's inspiratory flow rate, the lower the resulting oxygen concentration because of its dilution with air. Advantages. Comfort and the ability to tolerate for long periods of time, while still being able to eat, drink and talk. Disadvantages. Inability to deliver high concentrations of supplemental oxygen. The unpredictability of FiO2 and the necessity for the patient to breathe throughout their nose. A nasal cannula consists of two soft prongs attached to the oxygen supply tubing. The prongs are inserted into the patient's nostrils. The tubing is looped over the patient's ears and the toggle is adjusted to ensure a good fit. Simple face mask, made with disposable plastic that covers the nose and mouth. Delivers more O2 concentration 5 to 8 liters per minute, approximately 35 to 50 percent. A minimum flow rate of 5 liters per minute is needed to flush the expired carbon dioxide out of the mask so that the patient doesn't rebreathe it. Advantage. Delivers more O2. Disadvantages. Skin irritations. Interferes with eating and talking. One end of the oxygen tube is attached to the spigot on the mask and the other to the oxygen flow meter. The flow meter is set to give the prescribed oxygen concentration. The mask is then fitted over the patient's nose and mouth and the elastic tightened to give a secure, comfortable fit. Non-rebreathing mask, a mask with series of one-way valves. The valves between the reservoir bag and mask prevents exhaled air from returning to the bag 10 to 15 liters per minute, approximately 50 to 90 percent O2. Advantages. Theoretically, an inspired O2 concentration of close to 100 percent could be achieved if the patient breathed in only the stored oxygen from the reservoir and inspired no room air. Disadvantages. High concentration is rare because the mask doesn't create a perfect seal. Uncomfortable and skin irritations. When using the non-rebreathing mask, first attach the oxygen tubing to the oxygen flow meter and set the flow rate to 15 liters per minute. Occlude the inspiratory valve, being careful not to damage the valve and allow the reservoir bag to fill. Squeeze the reservoir bag to test the patency of the valve between the reservoir bag and the mask. If the reservoir will not empty, discard the mask Choose another and test again. Place the mask on the patient's face, obtaining as tight a fit as possible. Adjust the oxygen flow rate so that the bag deflates by about one third with each breath. High flow devices. Delivers a prescribed low or high O2 concentration at the rates that exceed patient demand, thereby providing more than enough oxygen for each inspiration. Venturi mask. T 
typically comes in kit that includes five to seven interchangeable air entrainment devices. It is used to achieve an inspired oxygen concentration between 24 to 60 percent. Advantages. Good for patient with COPD. Disadvantages. Entrainment port easily occluded. Other same with simple face mask. This is the Venturi mechanism. The 21% room air plus pure oxygen will combine and mix together in order to deliver the desired oxygen concentration during each breath. Venturi mask. Select a Venturi valve of the prescribed oxygen concentration and attach it to the mask. Attach one end of the oxygen tubing to the valve spigot and the other end to the oxygen flow meter. Set the flow meter to the flow indicated on the valve. Place the mask over the patient's nose and mouth and tighten the elastic to obtain a secure and comfortable fit. If the mask has a nose clip, it should be pinched to provide the best possible fit. Humidifications Humidifier and nebulizer if the patient requires humidification or complains of dryness and uncomfortable, we can always connect to humidification devices. The flow meter should be attached to an appropriate oxygen supply. Fill the bottle with sterile water using an aseptic technique and fit the humidifier head or fit a pre-filled sterile water bottle. The humidifier should then be attached to the flow meter. Adjust the flow meter to 4 litres per minute and occlude the outlet. Verify that the relief valve operates within 5 seconds. Reset the oxygen flow meter to the appropriate flow for the patient. Attach the delivery device and fit to the patient. The flow meter should be attached to an appropriate oxygen supply. Fill the bottle with sterile water using an aseptic technique and fit to the humidifier head or fit a pre-filled sterile water bottle. The humidifier nebulizer should then be attached to the flow meter. Attach 22 mm flex tube to the outlet of the humidifier nebulizer. Position the tubing so that the lowest point is below the patient. This is to prevent any condensed water from running into the patient. Attach the mask. Adjust the oxygen concentration to the required level. Set the flow meter to provide the required total flow to the patient. The intersurgical aqua mist makes this simple by indicating the appropriate flow above each oxygen setting. Attach the delivery device and fit to the patient. Always assess and monitor the patient response to oxygen therapy using pulse oximeter, blood gases, vital signs such as RR and HR. Source of oxygen, centralized O2, cylinders and regulators. Tune in for my next presentation on how to properly use O2 cylinder, concentrators, for hospital setup and home use.